a huge pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, I'm happy to be with you, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you. Dolly, my first question, you as one of the great songwriters of our time, what is the difference between a good country song and a good rock song? Or is there a difference? <laughs> well, a good song is a good song, no matter where you find it. And a, and a good song can be recorded as a country song, a, a bluegrass song, or a rock and roll song. So I'm a firm believer that a good song can be recorded in any style. But of course, I've spent my life singing and writing mostly country things. And uh, this is an exception for me to be doing a rock album. And I'm very excited about it. Now, you are an inductee of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, of the Country Music Hall of Fame, and of the Gospel Hall of Fame. But with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you were a bit hesitant in the beginning and didn't really feel too comfortable, as I understood it, to get that honor. Um, why was it that way? Do you think it's such a different territory for you? No, uh, I just felt like I know how I am about country music. I'll take any award they'll give me in country music because I work hard at it. And I think that I would deserve it if they, if a group felt that I, that I should have it. But I had never spent my life or any time at all in rock and roll. And I just figured there were so many rock artists that had spent their life hoping to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I felt like that I would be taking something away from them Uh, if I accepted that, I didn't want to get in someone's way that might deserve it more than me. Uh, they explained it to me that it's more about people that have had an influence on other people uh, doing other things. And so I did accept it graciously, but I just felt like, well, if I'm going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, I'm going to have to do something to earn it. And that's why I went ahead and did a rock and roll album in hopes that all the rock artists out there would appreciate me for at least trying to earn my keep, so to speak. And you most definitely did deliver, and how even you did deliver. Um, it's a huge record. Tell us a little bit about how it came to life then after the decision to do it. Well, I did make mention the night I uh, got inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I wrote a little song just for the occasion about that, you know, I grew up loving Elvis and all the people back then, even in country, we loved Elvis and, and all the, you know, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, and all those people that were rocking. But we kind of considered them still kind of country because they were country people. And so um, I mentioned that in the song. And then the night I got inducted, uh, when I accepted it, I went up and said, hey, now that I'm in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I'm going to do a rock album. Any of you rockers out there want to join me? And sure enough, A lot of them started calling, you know, my office and trying to get in touch with me saying, if you're serious about doing an album, you know, we'd like to be part of it. And then some I called myself and uh, all of them said yes. Some of them couldn't do it because of scheduling and our timing, but nobody said no. So I felt very honored about that, that they were so willing to sing with me on it. Yeah, everybody seemed psyched. Peter Frampton told the story that as soon as he heard you were doing a record, he reached out to your folks just to do a guitar solo on it and ended up on two songs. Yeah, he did. And he's great. I've always loved him. And uh, we not only we sang together on one of his songs, but he played guitar uh, on the very uh, song that I did with Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Uh, Peter uh, played the guitar on that as well. And and uh, uh, Mick Fleetwood played percussion. And, you know, so it, we really had a star-studded song on that one. And Paul McCartney not only sang, but he played piano. And so Peter, uh, you know, I just really got to loving him because he was so sweet and so generous. And they all were generous with their talent and their time. Yeah, alone that lineup of that song, you, McCartney, Star, sounds surreal even if you if you just read it on paper. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I that that meant a lot to me that he was willing to do it. I asked him if he would just sing on it. And he said, well, yes, I'll sing and I'll play if you want me to. 
And I said, well, I want you to, of course. <laughs> so anyway, that was great, you know, to have him uh, singing. I lo always loved the song, uh, Let It Be, and I, I, that song spoke to me. So I, I loved that. But we had so many great artists, like Elton John singing one of my favorites of his, you know, the uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. I love that song. And, and through the years, I've often worked backstage or being on backstage with him and we'd start singing together in the dressing room some of the old classic country songs so I knew our voices sounded great and when I asked if he would sing he said absolutely I wouldn't miss it so I was very touched by all of that how did the collaborations uh how did they happen were you always in the same room did you meet up with let's say McCartney or Debbie Harry or all the other people on it I did not get to be in the studio with all of them, but I did get to be in the studio with Deborah Harry, and she is the sweetest thing. We had a wonderful day, you know, recording and working on uh, The Heart of Glass, which has always been one of my favorite songs ever. And uh, I just loved her, and she worked, I worked with her in the studio, worked with Stevie Nicks, you know, we worked in the studio, John Fogarty. You know, we worked in the studio together, which is nice to be able to be in the studio. But so many of the people weren't able to do it. So anymore, you can record anyway. Somebody be in their studio and in, uh, in London and they can do their part and send it back. And then you work it all. I go back in and maybe sing some different harmonies and things with them. So it's amazing how you can do it. But I loved it when I got to be in the studio with with several of them. You are obviously one of the most covered artists in the world, but when you cover songs, when you play the material of other people, how do you approach it and what, what does a good cover version make? Well, I just wanted to be true to the song and I'm, I'm known as a stylist and nobody's ever heard me sing many songs except the songs that I've written or just original someone else's songs that, that I did the recording of. So more than anything, I wanted to sing it good. I wanted the rock field, you know, the rock artist to be proud of me. I wanted them to say, yeah, she killed it. <laughs> wow, she did a good job on that. You know, I wanted to do it really good because I had a lot on the line. I was a little nervous about it, hoping that I could do good. And I gave it my all. I, I, I sang my heart out because I wanted to make any artist that I was covering their song I wanted them to say, wow, I'm proud of that. That's really good. So it, it took a lot, but I'm, I, I have, uh, as they call good pipes, you know, meaning that I, I have a high, I have a high range, a good range and I can, and, but I have my own little style of doing things, but I tried not to be so stylized with these songs. I tried to sing them as best I could, you know, with the right melodies and not do as much as I normally do on my own stuff where I can just, go do whatever I please, you know, and, and I can, you know, in country music, you can phrase it however you want and it doesn't always have to fall right in the pocket, but with rock, you know, I realized you gotta be, you know, you really need to do it right. That's it. It was a whole nother world. I have to honestly say it was more involved than I thought that it was going to be, but, um, I had, I had good people. I had Kent Wells, Who's who produced the album? He's been my guitar player and my musical director for thirty some years, and a girl that works with him is a is a rock chick, and so she helped me a lot, you know, with some of the you know the phrasing to say, well, I don't, you know, people don't like, you know, they like if people hear the song, they want it to be like what they what they know. So I had I had some good guidance, you know, on on uh, just how to go about doing a rock record. You just mentioned that you hoped uh, the people who wrote the songs would be proud. I wanted you uh, wanted to ask you, when you hear cover versions of people playing your songs, do you feel that sense of pride? No, I always enjoy any version of any song that I've written. I'm more intrigued with how other people interpret the song. So I've never heard a song of mine uh, that I didn't think, wow, I never thought of it being done that way. Or, you know, it's like, well, that's, you know, that's different. But I always like it. And so, but you never know 
how people are going to feel about their songs because you can be very possessive because they're like your children. You know, you don't want to, as long as they don't just change your melody completely or add new words, you don't like that as a writer unless you get permission to do that or okay it at least to say. But um, everybody so far has seemed to be proud of what I've done. You know, when I would sing with the people, they said, that's a really, you know, a really good version. They, they said it inspired me, you know, to sing. So that made me feel good. Any any comment that I that I get, you know, on uh, the performance makes me go, you know, like one of those, like, wow, well, I'm glad about that. Because you never know what people are going to think. I just hope the fans enjoy it as well. And I'm sure everybody did. Um, I was wondering, uh, Stairway to, I'm sorry, uh, Stairway to Heaven is a song that you have already um, performed and recorded as a bluegrass version. I know that your husband said, but that's not a real thing. And you kind of said you promised him to do a rock version. Can you talk a bit about how that song came to be, how it, or how the, what it means to you? Well, my husband, as I mentioned, is a rock, a uh, rock freak. And he always loved Led Zeppelin, you know, all of their stuff. And he especially loved Stairway to Heaven. And as you mentioned, I, once I told him several years ago, he's, I said, I'm going to, I was doing some covers of, you know, in the country and bluegrass field of some of the rock songs. And I said, I'm going to do Stairway to Heaven. <clears throat> and my husband, who's very honest, he didn't mean anything bad by it. He said, I don't really think you should do that. Because that's a classic, and that's uh, you don't want to mess with, you know, with classics. So I did it anyway, and I played it for him. And he said, "Oh, it's okay." He said, "Are you sure that's Stairway to Heaven or Stairwell to Hell?" You know, just <laughs> make it a joke. And so, of course, uh, that's one. Of, going back to what I mentioned to you earlier about me being a stylist, and in and in country music too, you're allowed to. Phrase it however you want to, and you just do it. But I wanted to do it true to form. I wanted to do Stairway to Heaven just like it was, you know, done. Only, of course, with my voice and with what I could do with it. But I wanted it to be what people would expect, not changing it around or not doing it in a different style. Uh, so um, I did that, and my husband, you know, after I played him the album, You know, he's not, he's kind of a quiet guy. He doesn't say a whole lot anyway. But when I finished, he never said a word the whole time I was playing it. And after it was done, he said, you know, that's pretty good. So to me, that was like somebody else just, you know, jumping up and down and saying, oh, wow, that's the best thing I ever heard. For him to say it's pretty good, you know, meant that it's good. So I felt good about that. I wanted to please him, I think, more than anybody else. Yeah, that is quite a compliment then. Um, for Stairway to Heaven, you wanted, you didn't, for this record, you didn't only reunite the Beatles, you also, I think, tried to reunite parts of Led Zeppelin for this, right? You wanted initially to have a page and plant play on it. I did. I asked, I sent it over to, um, um, to uh, Robert Plant, For him, I thought maybe he could come and do some of the little things with me. He said, it's too good. I'm not going to mess with it. I love what you've done, and I don't think I can compliment it. But I'm going to love listening to it. So he was very complimentary, but he didn't think that he, and it was in a different key, too. You know, I'd already recorded it. And so he said, I honestly, I said, he, he said, I would be happy to do it if I thought I could add anything to it, but I don't think I can because you've done a good job of it. That's what I meant by having the artist, you know, say that it's good or the original singers. And then Jimmy Page, who I love, uh, I had hoped that he would do it. And uh, I never did hear back if he was going to do it until I ran out of time because we had we're doing the four vinyls because I did 30 songs and we're having to, we're doing vinyls and we had a, a deadline of when we had to finish. And by the time we got to that, I never had heard back, you know, from uh, Jimmy uh, about it. So um, I'd like to think he wanted to do it, but I never did hear back. When you hear the term rock star, who do you think of first? Who comes to your mind when I say rock star? 
Well, I think I probably think of, although he's not uh, considered the rock star, I think of the rocket man, you know, like the rock star. I think of Elton, and I was so happy to get to sing with him on the record, too. But there are so many greats. Steven Tyler, you know, I love Steven Tyler, and he sang with me on one of my original songs, a song I wrote with Kent Wells, the producer. And uh, Steven Tyler, God, just to hear his voice singing with me, you know, I just I just think that's great. But they're all great. Joan Jett, I mean, she's a hard rocker. And the Black Hearts, they did. She sang, I sang on her song, uh, you know, I Hate Myself for Loving You. And she sang with me on it. So I don't know. There's so many of them. My husband thinks of Led Zeppelin. But then again, you know, he likes Bachman Turner Overdrive. And he likes ACDC and all the, you know, the hard rockers. So it's hard to say which ones. That I, I, they're all great. You always have been also socially very outspoken, also when it comes to uh, social matters or, or also political matters, also on the new song World on Fire. I wanted to ask you now, country music is known to also have a kind of conservative audience in some regards. Do you think you're like a bridge between those two worlds in, in some regards that people can kind of, that you're the middle ground for a lot of people? Well, I do think I can, I'm a middle ground, you know, because in that particular song, I felt very led and guided to write that song because of the shape that the world is in. And I chose to do that on a country music show. I wasn't sure about it, you know, and I thought, well, why not? Because I did that on the ACM's, uh, you know, the Academy of Country Music, and I ho hosted the show with Garth Brooks, And, of course, we did that, and uh, the whole big surprise was I was going to debut my first song from my rock and roll album, and I wondered if the people would like it or not like it. And then I thought, well, Lord, my country artists, my country fans, I mean, uh, have been with me all these years, and they're always supportive of, of what I do. And I thought it would be nice because they know why I did it. They all knew about the controversy about me not wanting to be put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But I did accept it, and they all seemed to think I should do it. But anyway, that particular song, I do think that, you know, kind of uh, bridged a gap in between country and rock in the way that I did it and and for the message that I was trying to relay. Because country people feel the same way about everybody else in this world, whether you be rock and roll or anything. This world's in a sad shape because of how people are – Not trying hard enough, not loving enough, not caring enough to even try. So I just felt like that particular song was the one I wanted to debut to be the first thing on the rock album to just kind of speak to the world, not just the country world or or the rock world, but just to everybody that might listen to it. So I'd like to think with my personality, as long as I've been around, as many things as I've done in the movies and, and all that, that people will listen to me because they know me so well. I'm like a member of people's family. And so I do think that there is some sort of a bridge there for me. My last question um, is, a while ago you said that you really don't want to tour anymore. I think your last bigger tour was in 2016, I think. Um, has that opinion changed or is it still no big tour? And can we maybe expect a world tour also in Europe or something? Well, at this time, I'm not touring. My uh, my husband and I are getting older now. My husband just turned 81. And uh, I don't want to tour like I used to. I mean, I'm 77. And uh, here I am, a rock star at 77. But anyway, I enjoy I enjoyed it when I did tour. But uh, as I've mentioned to many people, you it's it's a long hard job to tour you got to work on at least six months setting it up to do a world tour uh to for your rehearsals not to mention all the production managers and people having to make all the arrangements and all but it's just a, a six months to even get ready to do it and then in order to make your money back you got to stay on the road at least on tour for at least six months 
you know, uh, to a year after you start touring in order to really do what you'd hope to do. So I'm not willing to stay gone from home that long anymore. And uh, I have so many other things I'm interested in, so many more business things and my writing, and I'm doing more TV, do, doing more movies. So I will do a few uh uh, shows here and there now and then maybe a long weekend here and there but i don't plan to tour with this rock album um but never say never as they say i don't plan to tour right now but who knows when i'm about 100 i might tour again <laughs> <laughs> we're going to keep our fingers crossed <laughs> but i would like to come do some shows though in different places to do uh, just a few shows because we do have a show worked up it wouldn't take as much to go do like a like a week or you know tour just do some hot spots as they say you know london come to germany and then you know do a few things just uh you know maybe a weekend or something at some big theater or some some big venue but touring I don't plan to be doing that. Okay. Dolly, thank you thank so much you. for taking the yeah. time to talk to us. It was a huge pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'll see you whether on tour or just doing a show here and there Hopefully now and then. somewhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care. Bye.